everyone, welcome back to my channel. I hope you're all good. Today, we have another book haul. <laughs> you're joking. Not another one? Oh, for God's sake, I can't honestly, I can't stand this. So I know it has not been that long since I did my last one, but I actually haven't acquired many new books between my last one and now. However, obviously I've come back home. Some of you know I was at uni and now I'm here back home. And there were quite a few books that got sent here like months and months ago, or I got them sent here because they were kind of like on the border of whether they'd arrive in time to my uni flat or to here. I can now haul because I am now with them. So I have acquired a few books, a few books, a few, a few books. <laughs> Number one, please judge me. Number two, please hate me. Because number three, I love it. So yeah, let's just get into it. This is our summer book haul. So first things first, I actually, I can't wait any longer. I cannot wait any longer. I have waited long enough. We have got a surprise book unboxing in this video. And this video is sponsored by a box of stories. <laughs> Oh my god, I'm so excited. Okay, A Box of Stories is this subscription book box which I have been eyeing up for a very long time. A very long time. Because I really like their message. Every year, 77 million books are destroyed because they don't get bought. And the idea behind A Box of Stories is that you save some of those books. So I think there's four books in here. You save some of those books and yeah, you get a surprise four books that otherwise would have been lost and not appreciated. So I'm so, I'm so excited. This arrived a couple of days ago and I have been, the le the amount, cause I'm, <laughs> I'm not very good at not peeking at stuff. I cheat, like I, I peek at stuff. Like I'm not very good at waiting. The level of self control I've had to have to wait to unbox this is a lot. I chose the crime mystery and thriller box I believe it's called. Before I get into it I just want to let you guys know that I have a 30% off code which is made with books so if you guys like the look of this you can go and use that code and get four surprise books for yourself. Oh my god I'm scared okay oh my god I see them I'm scared <laughs> We're so excited to be here, seriously, we're like, this is the dream. So the first one is The Darkest Heart by Dan Smith. So what is this one about? Once a cold-blooded killer for hire, Zico has sworn to leave his violent history behind. All he wants is a quiet, honest life. With everything he has at stake, Zico's mission through the deadly Brazilian wilderness leads him to a darkness he has never known. One wrong move, he could lose it all. His future, his loved ones, his few remaining shreds of humanity. Okay, that sounds very intriguing. That's more of like action-y thriller, I feel like maybe. Oh, okay, we have got The Guilty One by Lisa Ballantyne. On the back it says, a little boy is found dead in a children's playground. Daniel Hunter spent years defending lost causes as a solicitor in London, but his life changes when he is introduced to Sebastian, an 11-year-old boy accused of murdering an innocent young boy. As he plunges into the muddy depths of Sebastian's troubled home life, Daniel thinks back to his own childhood to foster care, and Minnie, the woman whose love saved him, until she too betrayed him so badly that he cut her out of his life. But what crime did Minnie commit, and will Daniel's identification with a child on trial for murder make him question everything he ever believed in? I don't typically read a lot of, like, courtroom thrillers, which is something I've really been wanting to get into. The Night Swim by Megan Golden is one I want to get to really soon, and I believe that has, like, court thriller elements to it. So, oh my god, this is so much fun! I want to jump up and down, I want to do a dance, and then I want to have the glass of champagne that I put in the fridge last night. We have got The Good Mother, Is It Possible to Love Your Child Too Much? One ordinary afternoon, Fairly Winter receives a devastating phone call, her best friend is dead. Jenna Rudolph was a devoted mother and wife and has left behind her young son Henry and her grief-stricken husband Ark. The circumstances surrounding Jenna's death, while, while tragic, seem to be clear-cut, but Fairly can't shake the feeling that Jenna was hiding something. Then Fairly receives a letter from Jenna. Posted before she died. <laughs> It's all the drama, Mick! I just love it! The contents of that letter force Fairly on a journey to discover the truth, a truth she may not be ready for. Driven by her need for answers, she uncovers a horrifying past of two desperate mothers and the tragic choices they made for their children. And she must ask herself, is there such a thing as loving your child too much? 
<laughs> I'm intrigued. <laughs> The last one is A Place to Lie by Rebecca Griffiths. In summer 1990, oh, I haven't read many thrillers set in like the 90s. Caroline and Joanna are sent to stay with their great aunt to spend their holidays in a sunlit village near the Forest of Dean. <gasps> oh my God, okay. The countryside is a welcome change from the trauma they know back home in the city, but in the shadowy woods at the edge of the forest hide secrets that will bring their innocence to a distressing end. There was a dark, dark house. <laughs> Years later, a shocking act of violence sends Joanna back to Witchwood. In her great aunt's lonely and dilapidating cottage, she will attempt to unearth the secrets of that terrifying summer and come to terms with the haunting effects it has left on her life. But will she be able to survive the impending danger from those trying to bury the truth? I feel like sometimes I struggle with split timeline stories. Like, a lot of the books I don't like have that feature in common. I'm not saying I dislike all books with split timelines, but I think sometimes they're difficult to work, like, to do well. But isn't this so much fun? Look! So I got these four books. I'm really excited to give some of them a go. Oh my god, this is so much fun. I can't believe I just got these four books, like, as a surprise. Isn't that so much fun? I feel like thrillers are a good thing to be surprised by with a box like this because you really don't know what you're getting into with thrillers and I feel like often with thrillers it's um, a good idea to like not go into it knowing much. So yeah, I would really recommend going and checking out a box of stories. I'll leave the link down below. And again, I have that code for 30% off if you wanted to try it out. I have so many good books to talk about. Okay, let's talk about a few that I bought. First, I bought Circus of Wonders by Elizabeth McNeil. Now I think, I need to take the sticker off. Listen, I'm bad at taking sticker offs. Nobody judge me. Nobody judge me. I don't want to hear it. <laughs> I'm just here relaxing, bitch. Not giving a fuck because I don't even know who you are. Your opinion doesn't count. But I think this may be like one of my favorite covers like ever. I adore it. I love this cover so much. And then on the inside, we have this art. And then there's like a stencil on the inside. I think this may be one of my favorite covers, like one of my most beautiful books in all existence. I am so excited to read this! So this is by the author of The Doll Factory, which I haven't read, but I feel like I would also really like, but I've got enough books to read for now. <laughs> this is about a young girl who gets taken in by the circus, and I think she does like trapeze stuff almost, and she becomes really, really popular in the circus, um, it's set, by the way, sorry, it's set in, like, Victorian England, which I, I am a slut. <laughs> Can I say that? I am a slut for Victorian England. Like, it has me. <laughs> I love it. I love it. And it gives me that buzz. <laughs> I love it. I just, I've always loved Victorian era stuff since I was a kid. I was, like, really, really into victorian things as a kid like i used to make my parents take me to like have you ever seen those living history museums where like you'll go and it's set up how a victorian village would have been and there's all actors like pretending to be the doctor and the sweet shop anyone i thought that's like an acutely british thing but anyway i love victorian times don't tell me why don't ask me why <laughs> But I love it. I love it so much. So she starts to become really, really popular. Like there's newspaper articles all about her. Figurines are cast in her image. But she, I think, is kind of like struggling with a, a deep and a dark sadness and feels ignored and feels like she's not getting to tell her story. So yeah, I'm really excited to get to this. I'm, I think I'm going to get to it soon. I have um, a video idea planned for it. So yeah. And then another beautiful cover is Marion Lane and the Midnight Murder by T.A. Wilberg. Oh my god, I'm just like about to get this. I'm weird. I'm a weirdo. This is set in 1960s, 1950s London. And this sounds so interesting. So this is like a murder mystery, which we all know favorite genre. There's this secret detective agency and there's all these hidden like passages amongst uh, underneath London which they use to like solve mysteries. A murder happens, I believe it's like a locked room murder, like this woman gets killed in this locked room and an apprentice, Marion Lane, um, endeavors to find out what happened in the murder. I bought this, <laughs> 
I remember I was writing one of my last essays for uni. It was my law one, which was the hardest one. And I told myself, Megan, you're going to finish this essay today. And you're going to buy this book as a reward for finishing this essay before I finished it to make myself finish the essay. <laughs> It is a new release that I've been eyeing up for so long. I love this cover so, so much. And I'm just really intrigued. I'm really intrigued. I love murder mysteries. So whenever there's like a new release murder mystery that intrigues me, I just have to get it. So, woo! <laughs> I'm so excited to be here! Woo! I bought this ages ago because the, it wasn't supposed to be released until June sometime, this book. And then they rushed up the release really quickly. And it's The Dinner Guest by P.P. The Dinner Guest by B.P. Walter. So this is a new release thriller, which I'm so excited to get to. It's actually written, I believe, by the guy who runs the social media for Waterstones. <laughs> Okay, this sounds so, this sounds like the kind of thriller you can just devour really quickly. In the back says, four people walked into the dining room that night. One would never leave. Matthew, the perfect husband. Titus, the perfect son. Charlie, the perfect illusion. Rachel, the perfect stranger. Charlie didn't want Rachel at the book club. Matthew wouldn't listen. And I believe like it opens with one of them with the knife in their hand or something. It says it's for fans of like classic crime, Agatha Christie meeting Donna Tart and The Secret History. I need to like reread that one day, but I often say that's one of my favorite books of all time. I did love The Secret History back when I read it. So I've heard pretty good things about this as well from people who have read it already. It just seems really, really intriguing. And like I said, like it's, I think it's like a murder mystery. Like you don't know who's actually committed the murder at this dinner party. I also really like it in murder mysteries when there's like these archetypes. I think like the guest list did that and the hunting party, but I didn't really like the hunting party. Both of them by Lucy Foley. They have like key identifiers for which these characters are. And I think that is kind of fun. It plays into things like Cluedo and stuff. Really, really excited to get to this. Then speaking of Cluedo, <laughs> let's talk about some books that my grandparents got me for finishing uni very kindly. They, I told them the other day when I saw them, they always pick so well because they watch quite a lot of my videos. Hello. They always know what I'm going to want. They always pick so well. No one picks better off of my wish list than them. So first, I'm so, I'm so excited. Um, they got me In the Hall with the Knife by Diana Peterfrond. I have butchered that, I'm sorry. I'm really bad with pronunciation. This is a clue, or I think that's what it's called in America. In the UK, we call it Cluedo Mystery. And I think it's this YA murder mystery series inspired by Cluedo. That's all I know. That's all I need to know. <laughs> I heard Mara from Books Like Woe talk about this a while back. And we have such similar reading taste. I go to her for all my like thriller murder mystery recommendations. And she really recommended this. She said it's like one of the best YA murder mystery books she's read. Oh, also, no, shut up, Megan. It's set in like a boarding school as well. Come on. No, I don't think you understand. I'm obsessed. Isn't that so much fun? Like a Cluedo mystery set in a boarding school? Get out. Like I genuinely, I've had enough. I've had enough. Oh my God. Oh my God. And all the students are named after characters from Cluedo. <gasps> oh my God. So excited to get to this. I'm so excited to get to all of these. This is like such a good book haul. Let's just say that now. Then they got me Across the Green Grass Fields by Sean and Maguire. You don't know how hard I've had to try these past few months not to buy this. But now I have bought it. No, I haven't. Someone bought it for me. So this is the, is it the sixth? It's one edition in the Wayward Children series. This is a very short one. I mean, they're all very short. I love this series by Sean and Maguire. This is the Wayward Children series where you have these characters, these kids who have gone to worlds through these doors that are perfect for them. And they've often come back and um, struggle to live normal life again. Some of the books are set at the boarding school that they go to when they come back. But I believe this one is one of the ones that is told while the character is in their world. And this one is one of the first in the series you can actually read as a standalone. Like, they're very short novellas. Often some of them will have spoilers for the other ones. But I think this is one of the first in the series in a while that is completely like new characters, doesn't spoil anything. So you could start with this one if you wanted, which I'm really excited. Oh my god. I know that this is about a girl who loves horses. So I think, oh yeah, she goes to a world filled with centaurs, kelpies and other magical, don't ask me to pronounce this word, equ 
equi equines. Equines? Equi the way I am going to read your ass on Tuesday. Pronunciation is not my strong point. And then finally they got me. I love this cover as well so much and so many people didn't like this cover. Rule of Wolves by Lee Bardugo. I will show you a close up. I love this cover. There's something about like the pink pink readiness and the silver of it I love. I can't tell you anything about this because I haven't read King of Scars yet but I think at some point I'm gonna do a reading vlog for King of Scars and Rule of Wolves together. I know this follows Nikolai, Zoya and Nina from the other like Shadow and Bone and Six of Crows series. I really loved Six of Crows and Crooked Kingdom when I read it. Not Ninth House level, Ninth House is still my favourite Lee Bardugo book but they were amazing, like I gave them really good ratings. So I'm excited to read King of Scars and Rule of Wolves and to see what I think of them. Okay, one more book that was gifted to me and then the last ones we have are all ones sent by like publishers and stuff. Oh my God. Okay, Sid, Sid, Sid. Let's go subscribe to Sid if you haven't already. For finishing my degree, she got me The Mirror Season by Anne-Marie McCamore. <sighs> Lord. <laughs> Tell me you're not obsessed with this cover. 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 <laughs> I love this cover so much. I'm so excited to read something by Anna Marie McCamore. I own Wild Beauty. If you watch my channel a lot, you'll know. I constantly talk about how I want to read Wild Beauty and then I never do. Maybe I'll even read this first, who knows. I don't feel like I should. I feel like I should read Wild Beauty first. But I have a plan for this in a video, but I don't have a plan for that still. Um. I know it's a very, very heavy book. I think a boy and a girl are both sexually assaulted or assaulted at a party. It's something about how they have to contain their magic and the girl doesn't want them to tell anyone what happened. I've just heard it's a very like emotionally impactful story, a very hard story, but I'm really excited to get into like the magic of Anne-Marie McCamore's writing. So thank you so much Sid for sending this to me. I'm so excited to read this. Hannah from Snow White Reader very kindly sent me an arc of Girls of Storm and Shadow by Natasha Yang. I love this series. It's one of my favorite fantasy series. Leigh and Wren, I love them as characters so much. Hannah had the arc and she didn't want it anymore so she very kindly sent me this. And I'm so excited to just own this. It's super, it's a super cool thing to have. Oh my God, I'm so excited for the third one in the series to come out at the end of this year. I will not be able to contain myself. Ages ago, I got this because you would have seen this on other people's channel, channels ages ago. But Fairyly sent me Shadow and Bone, the collector's edition. And I mean, look at it. And then you see the sprayed edges. And then my favorite part is the inside. Come on. What? Alexa. Tell me I'm stunning. So yeah, this was a special edition made by Ferrily and they very kindly sent it over to me and I love it. I think it's absolutely stunning. I'm a ho, I keep saying, um, okay, Megan, control yourself. <laughs> I love cloth bound uh, books, especially with like foil. That's my favorite combo, cloth bound with foil. I feel like a lot of this haul have been amazing covers, like covers that I am absolutely in love with. So thank you for really sending this my way. Okay, and then let's talk about some books that publishers have sent me. The one I'm probably most excited for out of what is here, um, these first two are sent to me by Harper360YA and they have like a form where you can request some books and this was one I knew I wanted to request. This is Love and Other Natural Disasters by Misa Seguria. I read This Time Will Be Different by Misa Seguria and I really enjoyed it. It's definitely one of my like favourite contemporaries that I've read. It was a really sweet book and this is her new release. This comes out the 21st of June so not that long away. Maybe I'll be able to read this soon. It's not very long. It's only just over like 300 pages and I feel like it's the kind of thing that would read quite fast. All I know about this is that it has a fake dating trope between these two girls. So I assume they're going to like fall in love. They're going to fake date and then they're going to fall in love. That's all I really need to know. When I saw it on the list, I was like, I'm so excited for that. So I'm going to go ahead and request it. Now, the other book they sent me, they're a long list. I don't think I requested this one. <laughs> but I am excited for it. So they sent me Sisters of the Snake by Serena and Sasha Nanuna. I have heard good things about people who have read arcs of this already. This comes out also on the 21st of June. So this is a fantasy book about twins separated at birth, one a princess, the other a street urchin. And I think they end up like working together in this kind of like heisty mission kind of thing to save where they live. 
And I've heard good things. I've heard really good things of people who have read this already. But I don't know how quickly I'm going to get around to it. Maybe I... I should get around to it quickly. But, like, I don't think I requested it. I may have done. It may be my fault. Like, I may have... In, I may... The finger may have slipped. I may have gone... Go on, then. Go on, then. But I don't think I did. I don't... I don't think I did, but um, yeah, I, it sounds really, really good. So I'm very lucky to own it. And then the last book that a publisher sent me is Other People's Clothes by Kala Henkel. So this is a thriller. Set in 2009 Berlin, two art students arrive from New York, both desperate for the city to solve their problems. Zoe is grieving for her high school best friend murdered months before in her hometown in Florida. Hayley is rich, obsessed with the ex exploits of Lindsay Lohan and Britney Spears. Like, can we talk about how I haven't read enough books set in this, like, golden age <laughs> of, like, Hollywood gals, like Lindsay Lohan, Paris Hilton, and Britney Spears. Like, I feel like that is such an interesting point in time to cover and to write thrillers about. Genius, in my opinion. Absolute genius. You're so clever. Oh my God, you're so clever. So they attend like the club scene. Soon, inexplicable things start happening in the apartment and the two friends suspect they are being watched by this eccentric crime writer that they're renting with. Convinced that their landlord is using their lives as inspiration for her next thriller novel, <laughs> they decide to beat her own game. The girls start hosting wild parties in the flat and quickly gain notoriety, with everyone clamouring for an invite to Beatrice's, but ultimately they find themselves unable to control the narrative and it spirals into much darker territory. <gasps> I am so excited! Doesn't that sound so much fun? Like, I love the idea of someone you're living with being a crime writer and they're using you as inspiration for their thriller. Excuse me? <laughs> I, I think it sounds like such a unique thriller. Like, so unique. Like, I haven't read anything like this. So, so, oh, wow. I'm so excited to get to it. Sorry, I just looked at things inside and I shouldn't do that. So, that is my book haul for today. As you can see, I hauled so many good books. Ah! I'm so excited. Reading, let me tell you, ladies, it's on the cards again. I feel like I've got my mojo back with everything, with reading, with myself. I'm starting to become myself again. <laughs> So yeah, let me know if you have read any of the books here, if you are excited for any of them, and let me know what books you have hauled recently. If you got into the end of this video, comment like an item of clothing emoji, like the dress or a shoe or whatever. Comment an item of clothing emoji for this book. Don't forget to check out the link for a box of stories down below and use my link if you want to do it. Use that to get 30% off. And yeah, I will see you very, very soon in another video. Bye!